Morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Graham Barrett from uh, Currencies Direct South Africa, one of the directors here in the South African office, uh, coming to you from a, a beautiful Cape Town morning. We've got Dr. Buerta joining us from Pretoria in a, in a chilly, chilly morning, he says. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to welcome you and, and, and thank you for uh, spending the morning with us. So we're talking about COVID-19 2.0, economic recovery, um, and, and what's in store for us. We're waiting for a couple more participants to join. I see we've got over, a, we're looking for a couple of hundred here. So we'll just, uh, as the time flies guys, the numbers are, are rising there. So if you'd like to take this opportunity, uh, we've got the chat function, introduce yourself, put your name in the chat function, where you're from, um, just say hello. It's always nice to see who's joined us this morning. There's a Q and A function as well at the bottom. Uh, so as we go through the presentation, please feel free to stick your questions in there and we'll try and address them. We'll pick one or two from them and ask Dr. Buerta at the end of the presentation. Um, and, and, and that's kind of what we're looking to do. Also, please uh, move over to the YouTube channel. This is going to be recorded and um, set onto our YouTube channel. If you're looking for that, you type in Currencies Direct South Africa YouTube and the channel will come up. Uh, Dr. Buerta, he, he authors our bright side. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. He's going to talk about the real effective exchange rates as well. So we're really looking forward to that. Got a couple more entrants going in here. So a little bit about us, Currencies Direct, while we wait. Uh, we're the best inter intermediary in South Africa. What do we do? We send money from one bank account to the next. Uh, for all our partners that have joined, thank you for trusting us with your clients. To all of our clients, we hope we got your money there safely and, and all is well. So I think as we go along here, we're going to, I think I'm going, I think we're going to start. We're sort of two minutes into it. So let me introduce the, the main event. Uh, Dr. Buerta is going to talk for about 20 minutes. We'll answer a couple of questions and then we'll, we'll head off. Okay. So Dr. Buerta, he's an award-winning economist with more than 40 years experience, including an economic policy advisor with the National Treasury, financial editor of the Daily Newspaper, senior lecturer in, e in economics at various universities and chief economist of the South African Federated Chamber of Industries. He's published more than 2,000 articles and research reports and more than 1,000 companies and organizations have utilized his experience, much like Currencies Direct, in analyzing key macroeconomic and socio-political socio trends in the Southern African region. He's currently economic advisor to the Optimum Group and authors several columns, including, as I mentioned, The Bright Side, which we publish monthly. If you'd like to uh, sign up to The Bright Side, send us a mail and, and we'd love to have you on the mailing list. Dr. Buerta, over to you, sir. Thank you very much and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, it's nice to be back on the screen. Uh, we're experimenting today with a fast and furious presentation. People are a little bit uh, sick and tired of uh, long-winded webinars. Uh, with a bit of luck, uh, there won't be any inclination to uh, uh, to pop off and, and fix some more coffee. Uh, I just want to mention that I've also got four children and seven grandchildren. So I haven't just been uh, studying and, and working. Uh, and I'm also the only economist, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, in this continent uh, that has provincial honors in sport parachuting. Uh, but that was a long time ago. And the reason I say that is uh, I don't scare easy. Uh, and there's no reason to be terribly scared right now as far as I'm concerned, because things are really looking up. Uh, my son who's a venture capitalist in Sequoia told me the other day, he says, um, you can uh, not prepare for a pandemic, but you can prepare for the end of the pandemic. Uh, and I agree with him 100% that the pandemic is on its way out. COVID-19 is not on its way out. We're going to have to learn with, to live with this thing just as we live with flu and with all kinds of uh, ailments that uh, exist in a society. 
but certainly uh, there will eventually be a large amount of uh, large element of herd immunity and of course uh, the antibodies are even better than the uh, inoculations uh, and apparently many South Africans uh, literally tens of thousands of them had COVID and they didn't even realize it so uh, let's start right off with uh, that topic I'm just going to share my screen and put it on that um, on the slideshow I hope everybody can see that and I love my title, Post-Pandemic Growth Era Dawning. It's happening faster than some people think. Uh, it's really bad news for the cynics. Uh, I don't hear uh, too much uh, nowadays from um, some cynical commentators that are uh, forever on my case. Uh, bearing in mind that, uh, you know, the definition of an economist, uh, it's somebody that will marry Charlize Tron uh, for her money. <laughs> Uh, which is not a bad idea depending on the mood she's in of course so let's start right off with COVID, and this is unbelievably good news uh, there we had the first wave and then the second wave and this is quite intriguing because quite a number of health experts uh, are confident or, or certain that our third wave actually started uh, simultaneously with the second wave and if you look at where we are right now with the um, seven day average just above 1000 uh, new infections uh, poor India I mean they've just broken an unenviable record with uh, just short of 400,000 new cases in one day Boris Johnson cancelled his visit to Delhi uh, for other reasons than the cuisine or the uh, after effects so this is uh, very good news if we can uh, prevent a third wave or a technically perhaps even a fourth wave, no, nobody's 100% sure, then I've got very little doubt that we're home and dry and that our economy will uh, reach a 4 to 5% growth rate. It may even be higher this year. Uh, I've decided to uh, take a different uh, stance today. I think we all know what the bad news is. The bad news is there's faction fighting. The bad news is that uh, we did suffer, our economy did suffer last year tourism tourism related sectors are still battling a little bit and they will continue to do so travel bans are still in place uh, you can read all about that in the cape crimes uh, as i call it <laughs> or here in pretoria the the china news uh, it used to be the pretoria news the uh, for those of you that don't know um, the new age publication is alive and well and it's living in independent newspapers it will serve as made sure uh, apparently that it picks up some of those journalists and he is uh, waging a vendetta against Cyril Ramaphosa uh, and the reform movement within the ANC. To put it in Afrikaans. These days I think are numbered, especially because of the IO technology um, share price evaluation uh, debacle at the PIC. Uh, and let's hope that uh, Shamila Batoy has enough prima facie evidence to uh, take hold of him as soon as possible. Rand exchange rate, this is what Currencies Direct is all about. And I cannot imagine a better company to uh, handle uh, foreign exchange transactions um, than um, Graham and Gareth and, and Obel and their crowd. Uh, really incredibly professional and it's a privilege to be involved with them. Now, if you look at the Rand exchange rate this year, it's obviously uh, the Rand has strengthened, um, but the volatility is still there. Now, if you were to juxtapose the Brazilian real, uh, the Turkish lira, the Mexican peso, Chilean peso uh, on, on this slide on an index basis, because of course the, the, the values differ, then, then you will see more or less the same element of volatility, but the RAND is outperforming everybody. Uh, if we look at the next one, no currency in the world has fared better against the United States dollar between the beginning of April last year and where we are today. Not one single. The RAND is way out in front. We are ranked number one as far as that's concerned, just like the Springbok rugby team. Uh, and I've got my 95 World Cup tie on just for the record. So uh, if we look at the RAND exchange rate since January last year, um, interesting. It's more or less where it was. Uh, which is something which I've been predicting all along. And when I made that prediction in April last year, uh, I was scoffed at by some of my peers. The decent ones have phoned me to uh, apologize. <laughs> it was so obvious that the RAND would ultimately recover and there are many fundamental reasons for that. But let's continue with the good news. This um, 
slide I, I pinched from the latest uh, bright side which incorporates currency compass uh, it's it's sort of a, a, a section of the bright side which is published monthly and if you do not receive that I can really recommend that it uh, will brighten up your your month uh, I, I like to believe and it's full of factual information uh, it's been said that everybody is entitled uh, to his or her own opinion uh, of course outside of North Korea uh, and Cuba uh, but not to his own facts and the bright side is just full of facts and this is one of them the a real effective exchange rate of the RAND at the end of March was only undervalued compared to its long-term average, the red line, by about 8.6%. And uh, Graham I've, and uh, Gareth Abel, I've done a quick calculation this morning. Uh, it's As we stand today, the RAND is in real terms only undervalued by 6%. And compared to 2015, uh, at the height of Z uh, Zupta Gate, uh, the RAND is actually overvalued in real terms by 5%. Uh, this is incredible stuff and I'd like to believe that there will be a large element of stability uh, this year and probably next year and that there will not be uh, too many movement in either direction from where it is right now. Right, uh, now if, if you do perhaps get a little bit bored as we go along, try to count the V's uh, and by that I mean a V-shaped recovery from this disaster which was the second quarter of last year. Uh, a, a journalist recently writing for Farmers Weekly had a caption where he said, he listened to one of my presentations and he said, uh, Dr. Boota uh, is advising you do not get trapped in April. April last year, I think we all know what happened in April last year. It was terrible. Uh, and, and the second quarter's results obviously uh, went hand in hand with that. But since then, it's just been great shakes. This is, these are the GDP uh, uh, growth forecasts. Uh, for the US and, and the Euro area, if we go to China, 8% forecast for this year. India, 12% forecast. Uh, they've revised our growth rate up to 3.1%, but I think it's uh, very, very conservative. Uh, I'll let you in on that in a second. This is the most pronounced V that I <laughs> that you could, will ever find. And that's the China PMI, which recovered so dramatically. Uh, if we look at South Africa's quarterly GDP, this is incredible stuff because in nominal terms, before accounting for inflation, our GDP in 2020 only declined by 2%. Uh, our CPI last year was 3.2 uh, uh, on average, which gives you a 5%, just over 5% real dip, uh, which considering what happened in the second quarter is, is almost miraculous. Uh, and one of the growth drivers which um, uh, Gareth is, is also uh, acutely aware of, and I think they're doing a lot of transactions uh, re related to, to clients in, in, in the commodity and the energy and the, and the mining spheres, is that uh, there's no doubt in my mind, I recently published an article on this, that the super cycle, the commodity super cycle actually started in 2019. But uh, because of COVID, nobody actually appreciated it. And, and, and what's happening now, it's just taking off from where it, it let, let off. Uh, this is brilliant news to South Africa because we export uh, all of the stuff uh, except, of course, energy that, that we have to import. Um, this is another V, the IHS Market Composite Index. This is um, the last time that we had eight successive quarters uh, of this PMI above the neutral 50 level, which is the border between expansion and contraction. Uh, was about uh, seven years ago. This is really good news. And the EPSA BRR PMI, only for the manufacturing sector, um, this little baby uh, recently hit an all-time record high. That, in October last year, that was an all-time record high. It's also been above 50 for eight successive quarters. That hasn't happened in a very long time. I like to always uh, look at what's happening in short-term insurance because if if you uh, if you don't have assets, if you don't have a property, a car, uh, a business with equipment, computers, etc., then you're not going to uh, ins uh, then you've got nothing to insure short term wise. And as you can see here, there is just a growing gap in the midst of a pandemic year between the premiums received, that's the blue line, and the claims paid out. Uh, this industry is in exceptionally st uh, strong footing. And it's very interesting to compare what happened to them in the, with the previous recession, which lasted three quarters in South Africa. The current recession 
well, it's not a recession anymore. But the recession of last year only lasted one quarter. Um, so that's SMA may differ from me, but I have uh, some specific problems with the way they uh, deflate the, the figures. Uh, look what happened to the financial crisis. Uh, and look what happened here. So uh, they have absolutely no reason not to pay contingent business interruption claims. Uh, and they've, they've been told that by several courts in South Africa as well. They've got enough money. Make no mistake about that. Uh, it's, it's very clear that the bulk of short-term insurance is related to motor vehicles, these assets, motor vehicles and property. And as far as property is concerned, really good news. We'll, we'll have a look at those two sectors quickly. Um, they are close to our hearts. Uh, I think most of us uh, own houses. Uh, we probably live in houses, at least if, we, if we're renting. And we probably own a car, at least one. Uh, in some cases, considerably more than that. Uh, the F&B house price index, look at that magnificent recovery. There is no doubt in my mind that the property market is heading for the long awaited boom, uh, which should have occurred quite a number of years ago. But then, of course, the Zuptas came with, with their uh, grubby little hands uh, and started um, stealing left, right and center. And Mr. Zuma appointed uh, unbelievably incompetent people to run government departments, to run state-owned enterprises. And as a result of that, of course, the business environment took a bit of a wait and see approach. We call that uncertainty, a lack of capital formation. Uh, and so that was put on hold. Uh, I, I believe that this property boom is not going to be as fast and furious as the one between 2004 and 2007, eight, but it will last a lot longer, I like to believe. Uh, this is a magnificent slide. If you look at the change in the average value of mortgage advances, then it's it's pretty clear uh, that we're headed for uh, growth terrain. Uh, and it's, it's an interesting slide because it tells you a bit of the uh, recent history. There we had low interest rates. Jill Marcus was governor of the Reserve Bank. Um, then we had evidence of state capture. So people were a little bit more cautious. Mr. Ramaphosa was elected. Remember Ramaphoria? Uh, Ramaphoria is gone, but the Ramaphosa effect is there and it's very strong. Then we had COVID and predictably it went into negative territory. Then we had the V-shaped recovery with low interest rates and look where it is right now. A clear sign of a growth phase in the property market in general. New vehicle sales. If you look at um, March 2020, these are the number of vehicles. Uh, not the value. Uh, commercial, local, commercial export, passenger export, passenger local. This is unbelievable stuff. I mean, this industry has recovered so so quickly. Uh, it's it's um, really good news for us. Uh, there you have the longer term picture. Once again, you can see the V-shaped recovery. As far as value is concerned, quite interesting. I think I completed this uh, slide at uh, half past 12 uh, this morning. Uh, the workshop and forecourt, um, that's the, the convenience stores, that revenue is still a little bit under pressure. People are not buying their uh, Coca-Cola and uh, stuff like that from, from the forecourts anymore. They're probably going to pick and pay where they have specials every damn week. Uh, but look at accessories, look at used vehicles and look at new vehicles. February 20, before the COVID pandemic, February 21. The value of cars of the motor trade in South Africa. This is a full recovery. I don't have to tell you that. Uh, if we look at real value added for the mining sector and transport and communication, transport and communication still battling a little bit. They were at a 90% recovery rate fourth quarter compared to the fourth quarter of 2019. Uh, uh, 2019. But the mining industry uh, had already fully recovered, obviously, thanks also to the commodity prices. Um, if we look at uh, manufacturing, the recovery there is virtually 100%. Trade and hospitality, because of the knock that tourism is still taking, it's not quite up to 100%, but uh, I think they, we can live with a 97.6% recovery rate. Uh, some of my students never recover from the first semester test, uh, but there was this one, Bright Spark, who, uh, uh, who got 95%. And, and we, we asked him, just like, uh, this is unbelievable, uh, you know, when he popped around uh, to the, to the, on the campus again to come and see us. And he said, yes, um, 
you know, I was actually aiming for 100 percent, but those first couple of lectures confused me slightly. Uh, as, as back back to uh, value added, uh, the value of output in South Africa by the key sectors. If you look at the government sector, <laughs> they never went into a dip really because, uh, well, they don't add that much value. But let me let me not go there right now. Uh, the reason why they changed uh, the streets in Pretoria into one-way streets many years ago apparently was to prevent the civil servants that arrive late to obstruct those that want to leave early. Now they are working from home with inverted commas, of course, but finance and business services, uh, this is brilliant stuff. This is the sector in which Currencies Direct finds itself in. They have fully recovered. Um, and this is also quite intriguing if you look at salaries the uh, recovery rate is almost at 97%. And for private consumption expenditure, it's at 97%. Um, if we look at uh, the uh, ability of companies within these sectors to pay dividends uh, in future, this is also exceptionally good news because the gross operating surplus in the fourth quarter for these sectors had recovered uh, trade and hospitality, uh, as we all know, lagging a little bit, but for mining and 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 uh, manufacturing, it's at uh, more than 106 percent recovery from the fourth quarter of last year. So the dividends will be forthcoming. Even uh, companies, even some banks uh, and other companies that have been uh, dealt a large blow with, because of COVID, uh, like some real estate investment trusts. Uh, are still paying dividends and or have commenced paying dividends again. Of course, if you own Kumba shares, you're laughing all the way to the bank, uh, as I am. Uh, gross operating surplus has also virtually fully recovered for transport and communication uh, and finance business services home and dry. There's no reason whatsoever for banks not to pay dividends, not even EPSA. <laughs> uh, they've got some problems of their own uh, with a uh, person with a sort of uh, a very authoritarian uh, approach towards life uh, now to be involved in a, in, a, in a private competitive sector was never a good idea as far as I'm concerned. And this is also probably very good news because the construction sector, as I think all of us realize, uh, will have to play a pivotal role in the recovery and um, uh, restructuring program which has been mooted by President Ramaphosa and in a new growth plan as we go forward with these 62 infrastructure projects uh, valued at 340 um, a billion rand. And you can clearly see in the AFRIMAT construction index also a V-shaped recovery. Uh, further good news is that as far as agriculture is concerned, we are a huge net exporter of agriculture and food. We feed uh, literally, literally millions of people on the African continent. Uh, message is clear to government, don't mess with private property ownership. Uh, we do not want a Venezuela uh, or a Zimbabwe in South Africa. Uh, the EFF wants that uh, quite obviously, and I think Mr. Makushula wants that if he can, of course, um, uh, understand what economics is all about. Uh, his days are numbered for the Afrikaans. Uh, viewers, if you can get hold of the burger or the belt today, my column is in there, the uh, standpunt column as, we, as I call it. And in Afrikaans, the title is RET Bende Se Topi Geklink. Translated, that means that the radical eco economic transformation faction within the ANC, their days are numbered. Uh, the other four members of the top six, apart from Sil Ramaphosa and Ace Magashule, have all come out strongly in favor of the resolution, which means that Mr. Magashule has eight days left. Then he's out of the equation. And that is very good news for this country. This is also good news. The confidence index in agriculture is at a seven year high. Our farmers are confident that government will not be or parliament will not be foolish about expropriation without comprehension, as I call it. <laughs> it's the same thing, by the way. Uh, and of course, uh, the numero uno sector in our economy right now, mineral sales. I mean, this is just unbelievable stuff. The price of rhodium recently increased from $2,000 an ounce to $24,000 an ounce. And we've got lots of that stuff, by the way. 
uh, and it has a huge future with palladium and, and, and platinum, of course, with uh, hydrogen, uh, which, which is the main future, uh, one of the main future sources of energy in the world. South Africa is really well positioned as far as that's concerned. Our trade surplus, I mean, it's just taking off uh, from where it left last year. We had an all-time record current account surplus as well as a result of that. And this is one of the main reasons why the RAND is so strong. The other one, of course, is our attractive bond yield and the fact that our fundamentals are pretty good. This country, uh, National Treasury, got a 100 billion RAND. That's a lot of money. That's almost one year's agricultural production in Africa. 100 billion RAND bonus in, in, in with a, a February budget, which they didn't budget for in October because of the swiftness of the economic recovery in South Africa. It's just more tax revenues. So the debate about the wealth tax, bye-bye, it's gone. So uh, really, it, it, it doesn't matter what type of topic you talk about in uh, the macro economy. Things are just looking incredibly uh, positive as far as the future is concerned. And this is the biggest growth driver. I've been uh, saying this all along. Uh, it was the impact of lower interest rates was totally underestimated by a bunch of economists in South Africa that were predicting 8, 9, 10, 11% decline in GDP. It never happened. In nominal terms, our, our total GDP only took a 2% knock in the year of the pandemic. Um, and the depletion of uh, inventories in 2025, in, in 2020, which, which was a, an all-time record, 165 billion rand. Just to put that in perspective, the average change in inventories on an annual basis the last decade was only about 7 billion. Now it's 165. Just the build-up, the, and it, it's inevitable that you have to build up these inventories again. Just that build-up guarantees us almost 2% GDP growth. And that's why I'm confident that 5% GDP growth for South Africa this year in real terms is conservative. The impact of lower interest rates is fueled obviously by lower inflation. It's hovering around 3%. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, one of the other big growth drivers coming to the fore right now is that the faction fighting in the ANC is reaching a climax. And the RET group, the Radical Economic Transformation Group, I'm not sure what, whether they understand what, what, what it means. What I do know is that they want to continue looting. They want to continue uh, uh, with their corrupt practices and with nepotism and cadre deployment, which is the root of, of, of a lot of evil in this country. The, their support is diminishing so fast. If you don't believe me, look what happened in, in, uh, in Durban at Tequini with uh, Zikalala, uh, Zizhle Zikalala throwing his full weight behind Cyril Ramaphosa. Um, this is really good news because it means that uh, within the next couple of, of weeks and months, if we can just contain COVID, uh, government is going to get cracking on its infrastructure programs. And for the cynics out there, that want to tell me that oh, government doesn't have the capacity to do this. They're smart enough. Mr. Ramaphosa is plenty smart. He's smart enough to realize this. So what did he do? So they advertised for members, of, uh, for people to, to send them CVs to be considered for a technical advisory panel. People with engineering background, project management background, corporate governance standards, know, they, they know all about that kind of stuff. accounting, maybe even an economist or two. Uh, I forgot to send in my CV, uh, but Graham keeps me busy um, with, with the bright side. And they got 1,200 applications. Uh, and now they've got this data bank and these people are going to be put forward as task teams to help, to assist government with the skills required to, to fix things in South Africa, especially the infrastructure. When the writer was appointed at ESCOM a couple of weeks into the job. He had a media conference and he said there's not one single problem at ESCOM that cannot be solved. All that is required is policy support from government and the right skills. Uh, we can do that. Under a president like Ramaphosa, uh, I'm sure we can do it. And we are headed for a stupendous growth here uh, in South Africa. Thank you very much. Doc, thank you so much. A lot of positivity out there, a lot of, uh, lot of stuff to include. You, you're not struggling to find information for the bright side, which is awesome. Um, 
So, uh, you know, you often refer to as the sunshine economist, always looking on the bright side. I mean, we even named our article the bright side that, um, that you produce for us. One question that came up now in the chat was obviously the, the czar strength um, from her. Thanks for your, your questions. And the czar strength is, um, is, is really great for, for importers, but not so much for exporters. Um, what, what, what do you say about that? And, you know, we need to export. Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, I mean, if you look at our exports, uh, unfortunately, it, it is concentrated on vehicles and components, on agricultural and on uh, uh, f processed food, and then m minerals. Uh, I, th I think uh, the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition are on the right track. Uh, they've uh, done a lot of uh, good work uh, in, the, in the cotton industry. They, they're on the verge of finalizing the master plan for agriculture, which will also obviously include food processing. And as far as the poultry issue is concerned, they've also done very good work. Uh, just to give you one example, the recent announcement by Ford that they were going to that they're going to spend 18, 18 billion rand on a new plant here in, in Pretoria uh, was made possible through a, a, a it's almost like a public-private partnership approach with the establishment of a special economic zone and President Ramaphosa and Minister Patel were present uh, at, at the announcement uh, that took place. Uh, th that is going to create thousands of new jobs. So certainly, and, and this is what people must try to realize, is that under President Zuma, we must not forget how much damage was inflicted on this country as a result of the mismanagement and incompetence and greed that took place under the Zuma administration. Um, we mustn't let, let our memories fade in terms of how much damage was done. Under Ramaphosa, we've got a paradigm shift, a 180 degree shift, where he is seeking actively uh, cooperation with the private sector. He realizes that in the public sector at large in South Africa, you do not remotely have the skills necessary to actually take South Africa forward to a three, four, five, six percent sustainable growth rate. The private sector must create the jobs. Government must just supply the, the, the underlying infrastructure, make sure there's law and order, obviously look after public health and public education, do what government's done, do in, in, in free market uh, democracies. They're not supposed to own mines and, and get involved in all kinds of schemes to make money. Um, if, you, if you look at what happened at Transnet, uh, Mr. Montana can shout and scream as much as you want, but I mean, ordering billions of rands of locomotives that don't even fit on your railway lines. I mean, this is crazy stuff. And as the Zono Commission goes on, I'm convinced that there, there have already been 100 arrests, 100 arrests. Uh, I reckon this is going to be the year of, <laughs> of the prison for, for some of these people. So, uh, but our export, uh, we, we need a, a uh, certainly a, a larger export drive. But where do we start? We start by putting a quota on cheap Chinese imports. Uh, and in many cases, products that receive subsidies by their government, which is, by the way, a military dictatorship. We must not forget that. Thank you. Wonderful, Doc. Thanks so much. Th and thanks again for your time. Um, yeah, a lot of positive messages coming in here in the chat. Everybody thankful to receive a bit of positivity and, and hear, you know, the bright side of what's going on in the SA economy. So thank you so much again for your time this morning. Um, thank you to all our listeners and our partners and clients. Thank you for joining us. Guys, please um, put your email, send us, you know, contact us on info SA at currenciesdirect.com. Um, Google us, Currencies Direct South Africa, YouTube, go on to our YouTube uh, link or channel. We'll have a recording of this up there for you. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Thanks.